Hi friends, Sarah here from sarahsbites.com. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm showing you how to make these amazing homemade donuts. I am so excited because you guys are gonna love this recipe. You're not gonna wanna buy donuts anymore after this because I promise it's not too hard and they are just so fluffy and amazing inside. So let's get started. We'll start by activating our yeast. So in a bowl or a cup, grab one and a quarter cup of whole milk and make sure it's between 105 and 110 degrees. Mine was at 106, so I just let it be right there. And to that, you're gonna add in one tablespoon of granulated sugar and then one and a half tablespoons of active dry yeast. So you can do one and a half tablespoons if you buy it in a big bag or just add two of those little packets of active dry yeast and give it a nice quick mix and stir and you're just gonna set this to the side because we want it to get frothy. While we wait on that, grab a large mixing bowl or if you're gonna use a stand mixer for kneading your dough, just grab that bowl right away. And to that, we're gonna add in one stick of unsalted butter, so that's eight ounces, as well as a third of a cup of granulated sugar and two room temperature eggs. And then you're gonna stir all this together really quick. And I usually like to let that butter sit at room temperature, just like the eggs. Then all you have to do is zap it in the microwave for like five, 10 seconds, and that's melted perfectly enough. We're then gonna add in our yeast mixture. You're gonna see it's super foamy on top. Um, and that usually takes about seven to 10 minutes. It really shouldn't take any longer if you have good, fresh, active yeast. So add this to the mixture and then we're just gonna give it a nice quick stir again before we start adding in our flour. Now we'll add in five cups of all-purpose flour. I like to add in about half of that stir it a little bit and of course you can also add it straight into your mixer with a dough hook and start mixing away but i like to do it by hand with a spatula first so that i don't have flour flying all over the place so add in the other half then and also half a teaspoon of salt and just stir everything a little bit more before we get the mixer going I'm a big fan of kneading dough with hands because I find it sort of soothing, but when you're in a time crunch, just use your stand mixer if you have one, of course. If not, you're gonna knead the dough with your hands first in the bowl for a couple of minutes and then put it out on whatever surface you're gonna use with a little bit of flour and you're gonna knead it for about four to five more minutes. Um, in your stand mixer, I just like to add, attach a dough hook, put it on low and start kneading away. So this dough is gonna knead for about five to six-ish minutes. You'll see when it's done, it's going to be um, very soft and it's easy to work with. It'll still be somewhat sticky though because this does have milk and eggs in it. It's not like making bread without any of that stuff. Um, so this dough will be quite sticky and when you press it with your finger, it should bounce back up. So I would say about five minutes in, check your dough. If it looks like it still needs a little bit more kneading, add another minute to it. When we're done, we're going to add just a little bit of olive or vegetable oil to this bowl. Shape your dough into a ball, unless you were kneading by hand, it most likely already will be <laughs> shaped into a ball. And we just want to put a little bit of oil so it doesn't stick while it rises. And you're gonna cover it with cling wrap or a dishcloth, and you're gonna let that rise for about 45 minutes. It should double in size. As you can tell right here, it's almost flowing over the bowl, so it's pretty large. And after your dough rises, you're gonna sprinkle your surface with a little bit of flour and we're not gonna mess with the dough too much at this point. Now we're just going to roll it out into a big, somewhat circular shape so that we can start cutting out our donuts. And just keep in mind, you don't want this dough to be too thin because you want nice, big, fluffy donuts. So I would say keep it between a quarter and a half inch thick. Um, I know that's a little bit hard to measure, so just sort of eyeball it. You don't want this to be a flat dough because it also will rise a little bit after this, but it won't rise enough if we get it too flat. Next up, grab a baking sheet and line it with some parchment paper so that we can start cutting our donuts out. I just used this simple donut cutter I got on Amazon. I'll link it in the description below, but it's pretty cheap from, my, from what I remember. I got it a few months ago, and it's a lot easier than using a biscuit cutter because it comes in the perfect shape and you immediately get the donut hole cut as well. So if you use like a circular cup or something, you're going to need something smaller to get the donut holes out as well. So just keep that in mind, whatever you have, 
but you can definitely go with a circular cookie cutter or a biscuit cutter but I find that a donut cutter is just so much easier especially because I make these frequently And of course, if you're doing this with your kiddos or something, have fun with cookie cutters and just different shapes. I think this could be such a fun thing to do with your kids, especially if you let them decorate the donuts with frostings, chocolate, sprinkles, or whatever. Once you have um, your baking sheet lined up with a few donuts, go ahead and cover those and you're gonna put them in a warm place to start rising. And then we're going to do the rest of the dough. So make sure you're also saving those little pieces of dough because remember those are going to be the donut holes so that just that is just so that you don't waste any dough pretty much and you will need to let these rise for another 30 minutes to 45 minutes you will see them puff up quite a bit and see what I mean here is this little circular part off the donut cutter comes off so it's even easier to do donut holes with it Please consider subscribing to my channel if you haven't already. Give this video a thumbs up below if you're enjoying watching it. And I would love to know in the comments, what is your favorite type of donuts? I actually worked at Krispy Kreme. That was my first job when I was 15. Um, it was a lot of fun when you're in high school, but it caused so much acne, all that oil and hey, it was just like all the donuts you could eat was not a good idea. But I love just plain glazed donuts or old fashioned. So let me know what are your favorites. Now while all that donut dough is rising, we're going to start making our glaze. In a mixing bowl, we're going to add three cups of powdered sugar with seven tablespoons of milk. It can be any type of milk that you like. I almost always use whole milk for this, so whatever you have, you can try. If you do something like almond milk or oat milk or even soy, those tend to be thicker, so just watch the consistency and add more milk if you need to. But if you're using just plain whole milk, 2%, whatever, I go with seven tablespoons and then I also add in one tablespoon of vanilla extract and we are going to mix all of this together. We'll set our glaze to the side and cover it with the dish towel or some cling wrap and then we'll make our chocolate. So skip this part if you don't want any chocolate donuts. But if you do, we're gonna grab a small little saucepan and I like this 60% Ghirardelli chocolate. It's a four ounce block. So all I do is just break it up and into the saucepan, break it up into pieces so that it's easier to melt. And then you're gonna add in a quarter cup of milk. And I do this over a low to medium heat. You don't want it to come to a boil, which you will see right here, it starts to boil. So turn it down if it does that because we want it to slowly melt. Just make sure to keep stirring that chocolate because we don't want it to stick to the bottom of the pan and use whatever type of chocolate you like. You can even do chocolate chips and you can melt them in the microwave as well. I also added one tablespoon of vanilla here as well as one tablespoon of powdered sugar because that 60% cocoa baking chocolate is a little too bitter for my liking. So now that our chocolate and glaze are good to go, our donuts have been rising for another 30 minutes and you can tell right here they're very puffy and they're pretty high in height. So that's the way that you want them to be so that they're not flat donuts when we fry them. So now for frying our donuts, you're gonna need a large, wide, and deep pot. I like to add about six cups of vegetable oil and bring it up to about 350 degrees. Um, so that's about two inches of oil totally depends on what kind of pot you're using. I like to use a wide one so that I could fit four donuts at a time. I can technically fit five here, but I don't want to overcrowd them or cool off the oil too quickly. And I like to use a deep pot just because working with oil at this heat temperature and frying and stuff, if any oil kind of flickers around, at least it won't get on you if you have a pretty deep pot. So you're gonna put your donuts in for about 45 seconds on one side and then flip them over for another 45 seconds. I don't have a candy thermometer, so I just use a plain kitchen or meat thermometer here, and I check the temperature in between batches. So I truly don't think you have to keep an eye on, on the oil temperature the entire time you're frying, like with a candy thermometer. But if you have one, of course, that's even easier. Or if you have a deep fryer, you're set. That's way easier. Um, but th this way is pretty easy too. So just check your oil temperature from time to time and then mess with it. 
on your stove. I'm using a hot plate here for recording purposes, but this is of course a lot easier to do on my stove. I also like to use a baking sheet with a cooling rack on it so that some of that oil can drip off. And I do the donut holes last at the end. I pretty much throw them in there all at once. And when, what's tricky about these little things, I swear they're like pool floaties. They just don't stay down. They don't stay underwater. So once you fry like one side of these, as you can tell right here, they're going to puff up on the other side and they're kind of hard to sink down. They're not like, they're not as dense and heavy as the big donuts. So the donut holes are a little bit harder to fry, but I just kind of mess with them with the spider here and then pull them out. And lastly, for the fun part, we get to decorate and glaze our donuts. So if your chocolate got a little thick, what you can do is just add in one tablespoon of hot milk to it and stir it and that should thin it out a bit again and then your glaze should have been covered by something by cling wrap or dish towel so just give it another quick stir and it should be good to go and i think you should let your donuts cool off for about 10 minutes or so before you start glazing them i like to do a whole dozen in glaze of course because we just love plain glazed donuts and keep in mind, these donuts are not as sweet as your standard donut that you would get at a grocery store or at a donut shop. Um, I purposely do not like overly sweet things, um, as you can tell in pretty much all of my baking videos. So these are not going to be that sweet. If you want them to be a little sweeter, you can double dip them in the glaze. So after they cool off a little bit, feel free to add more glaze on top again. And then, of course, do some chocolate kind and just let them sit. The chocolate do take a little bit longer to cool off and um, set. And for my donut holes, I like to just throw them in the glaze at the end and cover all of those with glaze. And I mean, at this point, you guys just have fun with it, especially if you're doing this with your kids. They are a lot of fun to play around with. It's almost kind of like making sugar cookies for Christmas or something, but these are donuts. So just bring the sprinkles out and whatever toppings that you like and have fun with these. I really, really hope you guys like this recipe. I know the waiting on the dough part takes a little bit, but I promise it's so worth it and they are so fluffy inside. So you're, I promise you're gonna love this recipe. Give it a try. Let me know below if you, if you did try and what kind of toppings you like on them, what type of glaze. Um, and I will see you guys next week with another recipe video. Thanks for watching. Bye.